Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Engineer Mansur Kamal from Al Jannat Engineering Academy. Today we are going to discuss the two layer theory. What is meant by two layer? So we consider the example of full depth construction in which a thick layer of HMA is placed directly on the subgrades. So that's why it is called two layer theory. Why they need to develop the two layer theory? As we know all about the flexible pavements that flexible pavements are layer system having a better material on the top like for example we consider the elastic modulus so the elastic modulus of the HMA is greater than that of the base and that of base is greater than sub base and so on so uh, each layer has different properties so it, it can't be represented by a homogeneous mass that's why to, for the solution of such layer system, Burmester developed a theory in 1945, hence called as Burmester layer theory. One of the advantage of his theory is that it can be applied to a multi-layer system with any number of the layers. Also, he specified some assumptions which are each layer is a homogeneous, isotropic and linearly elastic. The material is weightless, infinite in aerial extent. Each layer has a finite thickness except that the lowest layer is infinite in thickness. As we know that the lowest layer in the sub uh, lowest layer is the subgrade, so that's why it has infinite in thickness. And also the tire exert pressure on the surface should be uniform. In two-layer theory, we are going to discuss how to determine the vertical interface stresses, vertical surface and interface deflection and critical tensile strain. First, we are going to learn the vertical interface stresses. Vertical interface stress is an important factor in pavement design. Why? Because such stresses are used to prevent the pavement from rutting. Here in this book, the um, reference figure for vertical interface stresses is um, figure 2.15. Having two input parameters, one is the modulus ratio E1 by E2 and second one is the radius to thickness ratio. How to use the figure? Let's consider an example that modulus ratio equal to 10 and uh, radius to thickness ratio equals to 1.3. So first we look at 1.3. Let us uh, see that uh, here it is 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5 and 1 1.6. So first we look at the point 1.3 then we will move straight towards the line indicating the modulus ratio 10 and from that point we will move straight towards the left and hence we get that vertical uh, stress to the tire pressure ratio equals to 0 0.1, 0 0.41. So we simply put the value of tire pressure and then we get our required vertical stress. Let's solve the example 2.5. A circular load having a radius 6 inch and a uniform pressure 80 psi is applied on two layer system. The subgrade has elastic modulus 5000 psi and can support a maximum vertical stress of 8 psi. If the HMA has elastic modulus 500,000 psi, what is the required thickness of full depth pavement? So first we solve the first part of the question for the full depth pavement. So let's have a look on the figure. In figure we have basically three ratios. One is the vertical stress to tire pressure ratio. Second is the modulus ratio and third one is the radius to thickness ratio. From the given data of the question, sigma c is known, q is known, e1 in e1 and e2 both are known. But in the third ratio, radius is known but the thickness is unknown, which is the required data. So how we can solve the question? First we find the modulus ratio, e1 ratio by e2 which is equal to 100 and then we find the uh, vertical stress to tire pressure ratio which is 0.1. Same our reference figure 2.15. So first we uh, locate our uh, uh, vertical stress to tire pressure ratio which is 0 0.1 then we will move straight towards the line indicating the modulus ratio 100 and as a result we get that our third ratio which is the radius to thickness ratio equal to 1.13 so by doing math simple mathematical calculation we get that the uh, thickness of the full depth pavement which is h1 equal to 5.3 inch now comes towards the second part of the question. If a thin surface 
treatment is applied on a granular base with the elastic modulus 25,000 psi. What's the thickness of the base course required? So now we solve it for the base course thickness. The in both ratios, in these two both ratios, the first ratio should uh, be changed because E1 is uh, now changed. So such ratio modulus ratio equals to 5 the second ratio remains the same using the same figure 2.15 we get that uh, third ratio radius to thickness ratio equals to 0 0.4 so same doing simple mathematical calculation by putting the value of a which is 6 inch we get that the required thickness of the base course is 15 inch the second part in two layer theory is vertical surface deflection. Vertical surface deflection is also used as a criterion of a pavement design. Here in this theory, the vertical surface deflection is expressed in terms of a deflection factor F2 for which our reference figure is 2.17 having two input parameter. One is the modulus ratio E1 by E2 and second is the thickness to uh, radius ratio. Using these two input parameter, we get a deflection factor F2. If we compare the figure 2.17 with the figure 2.15 of vertical uh, interface stresses, the first input parameter in both is same, that is the modulus ratio. But the second input parameter here in this figure 2.17 is H1 by A, means thickness to radius ratio, and that in 2.15 it is radius to thickness ratio. So don't consider it as the same or don't get confused. Vert uh, vertical surface deflection has uh, different formula for flexible and for rigid. For flexible, it is 1.15 QA by E2 into F2 means deflection factor and for rigid it is uh, 1.18 QA by E2 into deflection factor. Now how to use the figure? Let me assume that our uh, thickness to radius ratio is 3. So first we look at the point. Let we assume that uh, our modulus ratio uh, is 100, so we will move straight towards the line and after that we will move straight towards the left and we get our required F2. Let's solve the example 2.6. A total load of 20,000 pound was applied on the surface of a two layer system through a rigid plate 2 inch in diameter. Layer 1 has a thickness of 8 inch and layer 2 has an elastic modulus of 6400 psi. Both layers are incompressible with a Poisson ratio 0.5. If the deflection of the plate is 0.1 inch, determine the elastic modulus of layer 1. So we are going to find out the elastic modulus of layer 1. For that, uh, first we required uh, to find out the Q because the Q will later used in the deflection equation. So for Q, we know the equation that q is equal to p divided by pi a square by putting the values we get that q is equal to 176.8 psi so now we are going to use the rigid plate equation or rigid equation of surface deflection that is uh, surface deflection is equal to 1.18 qa by e2 into deflection factor from this equation we are going to find the deflection factor so by putting the values we get that deflection factor is equal to 0 0.511 now for uh, to that now for to use the figure figure we are going to find out the first second input parameter that is thickness to radius ratio which will be equal to 8 by 6 is equal to 1.33 so our reference figure is 2.17 using uh, f2 is equal to 0 0.511 and the Second input parameter is equal to 1.33. So we are going to draw a straight line from both 0.511 F2 and 1.33 ratio. Where these two points intersect, so that line is our modulus ratio. So our modulus ratio is equal to 5. So by putting the value of E2, we get that the elastic modulus of layer 1 is 32,000 psi. Vertical interface deflection. It is also an important criterion of pavement design. Here it is expressed in terms of a deflection factor F for which our reference figure is 2.19 having three input parameters modulus ratio E1 by E2 
thickness to area ratio and radial distance to the area ratio. By using these three input parameters, we get a deflection factor F. Formula for the vertical interface deflection is very simple. It is equal to QA by E2 into deflection factor. Here one more thing that uh, we have a few figures for a different dip, uh, different modulus ratio. Like this, this figure is for the modulus ratio equals to 1. We also called it that it is a bosonic solution because both layers have same material properties like E1 equal to E2. That's why. This, this figure is for the modulus ratio 2.5, 5, 10, 25, 50 and 100. So we will use any of the figure depending on the modulus ratio. Let's for example we assume that our modulus ratio is 50. So we are going to use this figure for this. How to use it? One input parameter is thickness to area ratio H1 by A. It's equal to let we assume that it's equal to 1. Also the line on the figure indicating R by A. So from 1 we will move straight towards any of the line according to the question. And then from that intersecting point we will move straight towards the up and from that we will get our required deflection factor. Now a question arises if a uh, modulus ratio comes between any of the two values like for example uh, our modulus ratio is 80. 90, 75, it's come between 50 and 100. So what we will do in that very situation? So we have two options for such uh, for solving of such questions. First option is that we will check our value. If the value is closer towards the 100, so we will use the fig uh, figure of 100. If it's closer towards the 50, so we will use this uh, that um, the figure of the 50. But uh, this is this is a simple. Uh, solution if we want to solve the question more probably so for that we will do interpolation first we will find a deflection factor for modulus ratio 50 and then we will find the deflection factor for modulus ratio 100 and after that we will do the deflection sorry we will do the interpolation for any value between the 50 or 100 Jazakallah for watching the video